I was raised and brought up in a poor area of Manchester, working class area. It, it was called National Service in England at the time. I went into the, to the army in, in February 52, February the 7th, 1952, and almost six months to the day I was landed in Korea. <laughs> We left Liverpool and we sailed to Hong Kong. That was a great adventure for me because I'd, I, I'd never been away from home before went into the army. We'd been in Hong Kong and we'd done intensive battle training. The United Nations land forces, we should soon be hearing that all's well in Korea. I think it was about five days sailing from Hong Kong to uh, Busan. The first impression from the ship, <laughs> I'm gonna say it was awful. The smell, you could smell it. And I think anyone who landed at that time in Korea will say the same. It was overpowering. Well, most of us thought that perhaps it was the harbor and the, the stuff that had been, you know, whatever, but Sadly, it was part of the way Korea was at the time. The poor people were living, well, it was awful. We left the ship and we were loaded onto a train to travel north. It was a very, very old train. We had, we had some fun about that. It kept stopping and starting this train. For whatever reason, we never found out. But when it stopped, it seemed to stop for ages, 30 minutes or so at a time or whatever. And, and almost every time it stopped, the train would be not surrounded, but there'd be people at the train windows, Korean civilians, begging for food. They, they were, they were begging for food. We all sat down in this field, and after a few minutes, someone close where I was sat said, look at that over there. A group of Korean children, some probably only five, six years old, some perhaps younger teenagers, 13, 14. But there was about, probably about 15 or so of these in this group. And the poor kids were just stood looking at a group of Westerners eating away as though we hadn't got a care in the world. It, it's. It's something that I shall never forget, and I, it does, does affect me. These children were starving without any help from anyone, or so it seemed to me. They never tried to beg. They, ju they were just stood watching. And the American who served us the food, they, they were telling us, he said, this won't be the last time you've seen this situation. He said that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of children wandering about the country. They'd lost their families, whether they'd been killed or they'd just come detached as refugees, we don't know. That was the, my first lesson of war, if you want. Who gets hurt the most? OK, the soldiers fighting it, terrible things happen. But who suffers the most? The children and the people who are at the bottom of the pile, if you want. They're the ones that suffer. And, and to me, it just proves how evil war is. You talk about uh, war crimes and war atrocities. War itself is a crime. War itself is an atrocity. So that was my first impression of Korea. Um, yeah, it, it's, it was sad. Hello! Hello! Hello. <laughs>
How are you? Hello. Come on in. Uh, how have you been? I'm be very well, thank you, yes. Good. I shouldn't look at the camera, should we? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We will invite you probably in June. What do you think you can talk to the children whose parents are mainly from North Korea and some of them are from I, South? I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be political. I'm certainly not going to talk about North Koreans being my enemy because they're not. I'll try and be honest and talk about the war and how we became involved, you know, 9,000 miles away. Uh, why did we become involved? Why should we bother? You know, uh, I, I talk about like that, but I don't want to be too dramatic. I don't want to be glorifying it because the poor soldiers that we were attacking were only like me, weren't they? How many uh, soldiers did you kill? Him? That's one question that yeah. I hate. Because my, that, that, all my that friend, one question. No, no, I, I, this is one How question. How many? <laughs> this is one question I, I said earlier, didn't I? When we talk to the school children, invariably, every time, one of the children say, did you kill anyone? Like him. Like <laughs> <laughs> me. And I, I, I try and avoid answering that, because if you're not careful, you're glorifying what you did. The moment things happened, you're not thinking like that because that's the way you train, that's the way the, you brainwash when you're doing your infantry training. I mean, I didn't really want to kill anyone. You know, I didn't. They had mothers and fathers back in China, back in North Korea. We've killed one of their sons. Oh. You know, uh, they'd feel just like the mothers did over here. Oh. You know. It's their sons that are, that are yeah. dying. Yeah. It's not the presidents and it's not the kings and queens. Yeah. It, it's the sons of working class people. I mean, I don't, I don't think about it every day, but it, it's a memory that never leaves me because it was the Battle of the Hook and in May 1953, it's recorded in official documents that a thousand shells an hour was falling on the King's and Duke of Wellington Regiment's position. Now, he, I didn't count them, I'll tell you now. But uh, one can imagine the noise. It, it, the noise itself is horrendous. But the next morning, as, as the Chinese forces retreated, we'd held the line in front with the line of barbed wire. And hanging on this barbed wire was a young Chinese soldier, and he was dead. But his eyes were open, and he was looking at me. He, he certainly was. I mean, it, people say that he was dead. He couldn't be looking at you. But I'm sorry. That man never took his eyes off me that day. And whatever I did, I couldn't get away from him. And, and he, was, he was only a young fella. And I remember saying to my platoon sergeant, I said, he's only a kid. And the sergeant said to me, what the hell do you think you are? <laughs> I, I was 19. Uh, an old man, um, but yeah, that young Chinese man, I never forget his face. I don't know, did I kill him? I don't know. Uh, in the evening, as darkness came, uh, a couple of Royal Engineers came up and they crawled out and they put explosives and they, they blew, they blew the body away, yeah. I've often thought, stupid perhaps, but what about that Chinese lad's family? What about his parents? You know, his brothers and sisters, did they wouldn't have known what had happened to him. And how did his mother react when she knew her son had died? Because he, he was somebody's son. Like that we were. Thank you.
라이였는데 두 나라가 되는 몇 번밖에 안 됩니다. 오케이. 이거를 이해해 주시고 이거를 이거를 이해해 그러면 할아버지가 누군지 들어볼까요? 이렇게 할아버지가 사진을 많이 준비해 왔거든. Okay, let's go. Oh, can you read his name? And I was born in a place called Manchester. Anyone heard of Manchester? The young children like yourselves. There was hundreds of them. Abandoned, lost to parents perhaps, but were wandering about, starving for the wants of food. And that, and that is true. It was a tragedy to see the children. And that's what happens in war. War is not glorious. I don't want to glorify it because it's not glorious in any war. It's always the poor people and the young children that suffer. Do you have medals? Oh, I'll tell you what, because, you, because you're very brave asking questions, do you want to wear my hat for a minute? Come round here. You come round here. Hey. Hey. Who was it? Go on, show me. Don't be shy. Wrong. <laughs> the way the British Army or British uh, servicemen salute is with the palm of the hand facing you. That's the way you do it. Like that. Why do you, why do you wear a hat? Do your teachers shout at you if you're naughty? Well, that's what we do. If you don't wear your hat, you're considered to be naughty and they shout at you. But also, you know, when you know when you wear a hat, keeps me head dry when it rains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our students prepare a card for you, so they will come and give you the card. Oh, wonderful! Thank you. Oh, that beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, lovely. Thank you. You've got my name on. That one looks like me. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> that that's me when I get out of bed in the morning. That's what I look like in the morning. Just now say thank you to Brian. Thank you, Brian. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Encouraged, the world listened for news of the final signing that would mean ceasefire in Korea. Signed six copies of the document which would end the bloodshed. That was the longest day of my life. The morning of the 27th of July, 1953, uh, we all got word, went round officially, the ceasefire would take effect from 2200 hours that night, 10 o'clock in the evening. We were in the front line and the Chinese positions were probably about 400 yards in front of us, the hills in front of us, and we were that close. It was a very quiet day, but we were all a little bit nervous. <laughs> and it was a long, long day until we heard a bugler and he sounded the ceasefire. The following day, the following morning, we actually met with some Chinese soldiers. They came out into the valley between us, and that was a strange experience because we shoot each other's hands. The day before, we'd be trying to kill each other. This is how stupid war is. 
and we had cigarettes and we gave them to the Chinese. And, and we spent about, I don't know, perhaps half an hour with the Chinese. They'd come out and we went out and met them halfway. That, that was the day after the ceasefire. And once, once the fighting stops, it doesn't mean the agony stops. I mean, how, how many Korean people suffered after the war? You know, we, we don't know, do we? How many Chinese, North Koreans? It's, it's the same thing. Works both ways, doesn't it? And, and for what? I don't know. It's a, it's a mad world. We should remember and we should tell our younger generations to try and prepare them to put an end to war. I don't know how we do that. Yeah, there we go. Is it far now? Not far at all, no problem. You alright? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot, and that, that one is our house. Oh, hey. Do you work there? No. <laughs> Turn around now. Try and put them on that stone at the back. You try, try that. Go forward. That's it. Hey, that's marvellous. Now let's step back and let's bow now. Okay. Okay. Come on. But most of all, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me today. It is a privilege and an honour, and especially with the children. And all I can say to finish with is, God bless the land of the morning calm, because that's what Korea is, and what the Korean people are, are beautiful people, and thank you. And let's hope that one day I can look at a map, and there'll be no North Korea, there'll be no South Korea, there will be just Korea. That's what we all need and what we all wish for and that young people will be joined together again in love and happiness. Thank you very much for inviting me and thank you, Jane. Okay. So now I'll step to it. School? Yeah. Why does it My, my grandfather was uh, North Korean Army. Was he now? Uh, he already passed away is a long time ago. A well, long time ago. Because I am from North Korea. Well, yeah. It's and then my grandfather you. sometimes told me about North uh, uh, Korean War. Yeah. And then I came here 2007, and then I just uh, met you. Uh, it's a sad story, anyway, isn't it? Sad story. When we lose hope, we lose everything. We really do. But you, God bless you. You're my friend. You're not my enemy, you're my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you take care.
may, may, may career be reunited very, very soon, in, like I say, in, in love and happiness. You've still got family over there. You're protecting our freedom. Thank you, yes, honey. You're okay. Wonderful. Have you got family? Uh, no, no, no. He was going to do the same. Uh, you can do it. But you must be. Oh, right. Oh, come on then. How, how do we stand? Two, three. Hey. Ore, ore, because of this, I'm going to get you again. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. You she take care. She, she just wants to say, uh, be healthy and then live long with your family. Well, I'm living <laughs> long anyway. <laughs> when we got back, there was no official greeting or anything like that. So we got 12 and a half p, a a cheese sandwich and a rail ticket to Manchester. We got off the ship into the sheds on the dockside and we were inspected then by um, customs people. Have we got anything to declare and all this business? All you had to say was no, and they, they let you through. Why did you want to meet a North Korean? I'd love to find out their point of view. We don't get it, do we? I mean, we, we get a, a picture of North Korea that's horrendous. OK, I, I've got to believe that, but is it true? Is it 100% true? I, I don't know, because we only hear one side. And likewise, poor people in North Korea only hear one side of their story, don't they? This is, this is how awful it is. What I would say is always be proud of where you come from. Be proud of your parents and grandparents and grow up to be healthy. And let's all hope that you don't have to go and do things as I did. Take care of each other. <laughs>